Hello, my name is Nuno Correa, and I would like to present the article Designing Interactive Visuals for Dance from Body Maps, Machine Learning and Composite Animation Approaches. There is a growing interest in interactive visuals for dance performance. There are identified design strategies for interactive visuals in dance performances that can lead to a higher audience engagement. There is also identified potential in using interactive visuals to convey to the audience otherwise non-visible elements of performances. We aim to expose non-visible elements from the dancers, leading to the research question, how to design interactive visuals for contemporary dance performance in a way that reveals the inner processes of the dancers. Our approach is informed by the Soma Design process and by tools used in Soma Design, such as body maps. To answer our research question, we devised a set of co-design stages. Our stage one consisted of a sketching workshop, two days, where 10 dancers created movement exercises and then sketched body maps based on those exercises. In stage two, our research team developed prototypes to create interactive visuals from the body maps generated across three months. In stage three, four days, the 10 dancers tested our systems and then provided feedback and suggestions in two final focus group sessions, one per prototype. We used this feedback to iterate the respective designs. In the longer stage four, the systems were used to create, rehearse and present choreographies by two of the participants in the previous stages, leading to further evaluation. 12 days in total, six days per participant. Stage one. The objective of this stage two-day workshop was to gather visual ideas and data about the dancer's inner bodily processes during movement. We used the two types of body maps identified, freeform and outline based, as the main tool to collect visual ideas. Dancers collectively created the choreography divided in sections. We used biosignal sensors to gather bodily data. Drawings and data were labeled according to the specific section of the choreography that it corresponds to. A total of 150 body maps were produced, 50 freeform and 100 outline-based body maps. Stage 2, MLIV. We followed two different approaches for interactive visuals. Machine Learning Interactive Visuals Approach, MLIV, for the outline-based body maps. Each body map was labeled according to a specific section of the choreography and then matched with the biosignal sensor data recorded while the movement was being performed. We developed a system user TensorFlow capable of morphing between the performer's body map drawings by predicting the interpolated frames according to real-time biosignal sensor data. Stage 2, CAIV. We adopted a human learning approach we entitled Composite Animation Interactive Visuals, CAIV, to create interactive visuals from the freeform body maps. We used the term composite animation to adapt the concept of composite drawings from forensic art, combining various sources into a single graphic image, to animation. To pursue this concept, we hired a professional animator to transform the freeform body maps into motion graphics, informed by the annotations on the body maps and the matching video sequence. We created a visual sequencer for the animations using the software Isadora. Now I'll show a short video encompassing stages one and two. So this part of the video depicts day one of stage one, where the dancers created the sequence of movement exercises, a short choreography. It was divided into five segments. We collected biosignal data across those segments and also we recorded videos. The data was then labeled according to the segment of the choreography. We then asked the dancers to produce body maps according to those segments. This for uh, freeform body maps and for outline based. Now here you see the outline based body maps being drawn and also annotations being created to, to the drawings. And here you see an example of the CAIV approach where the animator took the movement of the video and the drawing to create an animation. Here another example, a movement, the corresponding body map, and then the resulting animation. And here we have the MLIV approach, we have outline-based body maps drawn, all the, the body maps drawn, and then these result in animation interpolations through machine learning from the different drawings based on the sensor data. Stage 3. 
The main objectives of this second workshop, four days, were to evaluate the prototypes and collect feedback. Dancers were organized into two groups of five participants, MLIV group and CAIV group, focusing on the respective prototypes. On the last day, we organized two focus groups, one with each group, aiming to give feedback to the respective prototype. Stage 4. After the Stage 3 workshop, participants could submit proposals for choreographies to be developed. Two of the selected proposals included the use of the MLIV and CAIV prototypes by choreographers C1 and C2. We arranged six separate six-hour studio sessions with each choreographer. At the end of each session, we conducted short, semi-structured interviews. I'd like to show footage from stages three and four. Here we are seeing stage three, where we conducted testing of the prototypes. Here it's the prototype MLIV being tested. And later we will see footage of stage four with here with choreographer C1 and the MLIV prototype in the background. And here with choreographer C2 and the CAIV prototype in the background. I will now present highlights from the discussion in the paper. Organic and introspective interactive visuals. The MLIV prototype was considered successful as a tool for revealing internal bodily processes in stage 3. Dancers appreciated that visuals took their own notation from their body maps as a starting point. They highlighted the impact that the system had in their own movement and even in their imagination. In stage 4, C1 explored this to create a feedback looping system between the biological, the digital and back to the biological she felt she achieved new possibilities for movement. Accounting for soul responsiveness. The MLIV prototype had limitations in terms of responsiveness, which can be attributed to a small corpus of body maps, only 100, and limited sensor data collected. This low reactivity was considered by some dancers in stage three to be problematic. In stage four, to mitigate the risks of a slow responsiveness of the system in a performance, C1 combined real-time visuals from the MLIV prototype with pre-recorded videos of visuals from rehearsals. Connecting idiosyncratic animations with movement. In stage 3, dancers considered that the CAIV prototype had the potential for revealing things that happened in the dancer's head while we are dancing, the decision process of what movement to execute next. In stage 4, the resulting animations were considered aesthetically successful by C2 and she enjoyed their minimalism. She used the animations to represent the body of an artificial entity that would enter a dialogue with the dancer. C2 controlled this artificial entity herself by operating the CAIV prototype. This way, she could interact with the dancer in real time, which she enjoyed. The visuals allowed her creating connections between image and body. The sequencing system for the animations was also considered successful in terms of visualizing inner processes. Comparing visualization approaches. We argue that an MLIV approach can be beneficial with more constrained body maps, such as the outline-based ones, with specific rules for drawing, as we have used. In our case, the rules were coloring specific areas of the body according to a certain criteria, parts of the body involved in a movement. These constraints are beneficial for training a machine learning system, especially when having access only to a relatively small corpus of drawings. A CAIV approach can be preferable when the body maps are more freeform, where the visual qualities are harder to represent with a computational model. The CAIV method is clearly more laborious, as there is a need for manually generating animations. It also requires a system for adding interactivity to trigger the individual animations. There is potential for a future hybrid solution merging the flexible mappings of MLIV and the idiosyncratic representation in CAIV. In terms of other potential applications, body maps have been used in areas such as health and psychological assessment, and we identify potential for systems with interactive visuals applied to those fields. Our approaches could facilitate a rich and personalized visualization of SOMA trajectories. In conclusion, our main contributions with this research are the two approaches toward visualizing inner aspects of the dancer's bodies, MLIV and CAIV. This led to two software systems, available as open source, with design framework descriptions, presented in the paper, for creating interactive visuals from, respectively, outline-based and freeform body maps. Designers can therefore replicate our MLIV and CAIV approaches to interactive visuals from body maps. The study is a first step toward interactive visualizations for dance based on body maps and further research is needed. These are the references used in this presentation and thank you.